Okay, so this is my 94 Ram. It has an airbag system on the back that's supposed to help the load springs uh, when I hook up my trailer and uh, and uh, I find it to be a pain the way the airbag system works on this thing. You have to manually connect a, um, a tire chuck to it and fill it to whatever pressure is required to level the truck off. And you can't just do that on the fly. You have to set it at a at an air station or back home where your air compressor is. So um, I'm going to build an automated one, kind of like on a tractor trailer unit, where they have airbags with an auto level valve and they've got a dump valve and everything. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to start the system with a. I'm going to try boost pressure to charge up an air compressor tank first and see if there's enough pressure there to actually level the truck off when there's a load on it. Uh, if not, then I'll wire in some kind of air compressor to charge the air compressor tank up. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take an old air compressor that I got and I'm going to mount that tank under the truck somewhere, take all those fittings and stuff off of it, maybe utilize that uh, switch, uh, that air switch on it to turn the air compressor on and off if I have to use an electronic air compressor. I'd rather have a system that is 100% uh, off of uh, turbo pressure because I don't need to have an onboard compressor to pump it up and down. And the auto level valve will auto figure it out uh, based on how much load I have on it. When there's no load on it, it'll let some air out so it's not rock hard to ride on. And when I load her up, it'll sink down, the auto level valve will sense it, and it'll pick the back end up and help the springs out. So I'll show you how to install this uh, one part at a time. I'm going to be replacing the current bag system on it because the, the old bags have popped. So I've got some new ones there. Uh, I don't have all the other hardware for the bags because the truck already has a bag system on it. So I'm just replacing the current bags. Here's the old airbag and I'm going to change it out just like... And just like that, the new bag is in. I want to show you this old bag. That's why it failed there. It was rubbing, and I think I figured out why. If you look up, I'll put that down. If you put look up here, you can see that that slot, those slotted holes, are on the inside. And I think what happened is the installer, whoever installed this originally, put this plate on backwards, and this this slotted hole should be over on this side, because when it's over there, I noticed it was pushing the bag. It was pushing the bag in like that and it was causing it to rub on the frame there and you can see where it was rubbing and eventually that's going to rub through so I'm going to flip that plate around and correct it. So I did a little, little bit different here. I took this bracket before it was on top. It was sitting on top so I put it on the bottom side just to give the bag a little bit more uh, so it's not being stretched so bad when the truck is on the lift. Uh, I also flipped that bracket around and another thing I did is I got a long bolt and I let it bottom out on the bag and I'm letting it just ride like that and that bolt will just act as a guide. Um, the bag doesn't have to be bolted right down tight to the bracket. Every time I lifted the truck the bags were getting stretched really bad and I wanted to let it have a little gap so that uh, bolt there is now just acting as a guide and it'll just move up and down in that hole there freely. Um, and it'll just guide the, the bag to where it needs to sit on its perch. And that's all it needs to do. Once there's weight on it, it's not going to matter. All, all that bolt has to do is make sure it stays kind of center. And it's acting as a guide. So that's all I want that one to do. And the up top ones are tight. And I got my new fitting in there. And I just got to hook up my airline. Also, I got that bag uh, sitting a lot farther away from the frame now. It is no longer going to rub on the frame. Uh, changing that bracket around did the trick. The thing you might want to do when you put your inner fender well back in is trim it so that your airbag is not rubbing on your inner fender well wearing your bag out on this side. I just wanted to show you how the bag is leaning in towards the frame of the truck and it's just how the installer did it and this one was also rubbing. Let's see if I can show you the hole in it and you can see the hole in it right there it was rubbing and you can also see it stretch like crazy while I got it lifted on the lift that's why I'm only going to put that bolt in and use it as a guide on the bottom down here because it'll allow it to have some give where I'm not going to stretch the crap out of it every time I put it on the lift so I'm going to get this side done just like that it's done 
Okay, so I was going to show you the auto level valve. I got it tied in with my airbags now. So that's an auto level valve that you can find on a tractor trailer unit. You can get them off Amazon. Uh, so you got air coming in on the top and then the side port there goes to the airbags and it vents out of here on the bottom. Used threaded ready rod and I welded a nut to a little cylinder that I got a pin going through so that I can remove it and adjust it as I need. Okay, so I'm going to come over here, show you my airline mess. So I got a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, I'm going to see if I can hold the light and point this out. So I've got a black line up here, and that's coming from my air supply. So air will come down this way, it'll go through, it can't go through this way, it's a one-way check valve, and I did that for a reason, I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, then the air flows this way, and it goes to the auto level valve, and then it comes back to the T. To supply the airbags so line goes to the airbag line goes to the airbag and then uh, when i go hit my dump valve in the truck uh, air is pressured up on this side because all the air is going through the valve the dump valve and the truck the switch and what happens is the air will evacuate out this way and then air this allows the air to dump out of the bags this one-way check valve and then that'll allow it to dump the airbags uh, otherwise, if you didn't have that uh, valve there, um, it would just dump um, or you'd have full pressure going to your airbags if you didn't have the one-way check valve. And then uh, your auto level valve would be no point. It wouldn't work at all. So you got to have that check valve there. I'll show you on paper what it looks like. I drew it out on paper and I'll show you the, the paper diagram because this looks like a mess and I know it's hard to follow and it's hard to imagine what's going on here. So anyway, I'll take you over to the air tank. I'm not quite done the air tank yet. So I got the air tank bolted to the truck and it's just an old compressor tank I had kicking around. So I got a one-way check valve here, which is a larger line. Uh, I think it's 3 8 line. And it goes through a one-way check valve to charge the tank. The air supply is coming from the turbocharger system and I believe the truck makes about 30 pounds of boost. And uh, I'm going to try that and see if that's enough air to supply the airbags to lift it to the level I want when it's loaded. So I've got this line goes up to supply my air switch uh, in the truck. And then this line here is the one that goes to the turbocharger and this line is going to go to the air compressor and on top of here is just a pressure uh, safety bleed valve that comes on all air compressors. And uh, I'll show you under the hood where I tie in a little bit later. Now I'm going to show you where I run the two lines. So one line goes to the airbags and the other one um, goes to that uh, auto level valve assembly. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to hook that up to the switch there. Okay, so I got the air switch installed with the two lines. One goes to the bag and one gets its air from the auto level valve at the back of the truck. And uh, I put in this gauge. I went for a drive and uh, checked it out to see what the truck's making for boost pressure because I wasn't sure. But it is 30 pounds. It is making 30 pounds of boost and that's what it's stored up in the compressor tank. And that's what this gauge is reading. So I'm just going to flick the uh, airbag uh, airbags off now and I'll just show you, you'll be able to hear it hissing under the dash. That's letting the air out of the airbags. There's not much to look at there, but I'm going to give you a demonstration under the truck. Okay, so this is the auto level valve under the truck all finished and I got air in it. So I'm just going to take my little arm off there for my level and I'm going to work that valve up and down and I'll show you. Okay, I'm dropping the air there. You can see the suspension going down. I'm gonna, if I wanted to raise it up. You can see how high that goes. So, the idea, the idea is just to get the truck to ride at a certain ride height when I'm towing a trailer. So when I put some weight on this thing, uh, sometimes I was hitting the bump stops and, uh, well, that just doesn't do. So this should cure the uh, ride height problem with a uh, heavy load on a trailer. Okay, I put my safety pin back in and I just want you to notice that I got three holes there on that arm. I, I drilled the extra two because I wasn't sure that I was going to have the right lift that I wanted. And the one on the end that comes factory with the valve, that one there. 
uh, it didn't have uh, it's, the angle was not right it's this air valve is for a tractor trailer unit so they move a lot more than the, this airbag system can move so I had to move the uh, the rod the adjustment rod further in so that there was less leverage on it so that I would get more movement out of the valve and it would adjust it to where I wanted it to and that that setting there seems to work pretty good for this setting and I'll let you know what it's like when I'm towing a trailer okay so the old Dodge air system update I am gonna go with an AC compressor that I'm gonna convert to a air compressor uh, because my truck doesn't have AC anyways but it does have the bracket for the AC compressor so I'm going to take a Cummins air compressor, uh, AC compressor that I got from an auto wrecker, and I'm going to convert it to an air compressor. Uh, I'm not going to show you how I do this. There's plenty of videos that do, and I'll link one in the description. Um, uh, one, one video I watched, the guy had tapped out that little hole down there because you have to block that so oil doesn't pass through. Uh, he tapped it and he didn't cover the hole on the other side, so he had to take the whole thing apart and clean it because he got filings in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that hole off, then I'm going to tap it, then I'm going to blow the filings out the other side so I don't have to take the whole thing apart and clean it. Then I'm going to pack this thing full of grease and shoot some grease in that ball bearing there and have the grease probably about quarter way full in this air compressor so it always has some splash happening when the grease heats up and it turns to liquid. And then I'm going to grease that uh, bearing over there and then I'm going to put everything back together. Okay, so for plugging that hole I took a screw and I took a zip disc and I ground it down all the way down like that. I've already got the hole threaded and the idea is I'm going to tighten it down and it'll break off in there and it'll be totally plugging that port and this port will never be used again. It was the original oiling port for the compressor pistons to go from the pump side to the crankshaft side of it. Um, so we're just going to eliminate that passage because it no longer needs to push oil to the other side to lubricate the pistons because we want air on this side and lubrication on the other side. And there it is. I got it in, I twisted it in, it tightened down, and then it broke off like I planned. Hey, air compressor update. I've got two sizes of line. This is going to be my pressure line. It is 612-12-06. And the other line is 612-12-10. And I, the larger line is for the inlet on the compressor, so this will be coming from the turbocharged side of the engine. And that one will down there will be going to the air tank under the truck. Also, I wired in a new connector because the factory one that was on this one doesn't match the one that was on my truck. And I changed the connector on the truck as well so it matches this one, so it'll be a quick, easy plug and play. Also added a grease zerk right there on top, so when I'm greasing the truck, I'll just give a couple shots of grease into the crankcase of my air compressor. Okay, so I got my AC compressor converted to air compressor installed. You can see the lines coming off of it there. The larger line is the intake line, and the smaller line is the charge line that goes to the air compressor unit. And I got it coming up, hang on a sec. I got it coming up here, and then it goes along the firewall. Oh up here out of the way out of all the heat and then I got that big line loops around like that and then it goes up there and it gets its uh, pressure or its uh, air supply from the intake manifold which is under boost pressure most of the time so when it calls for air it'll charge just that much faster because it'll compound the boosted air. Uh, the other line goes down to the air compressor along the frame or the compressor tank along the frame. For the wiring on this air compressor unit, uh, this truck actually had the factory AC air compressor plug, so I utilized the factory wiring and the factory AC relay, which is right there. Even though this truck doesn't have AC, uh, that circuit was there, so I utilized that circuit and then I found the wire that went to the ECU, which came out of that plug right there, and I depinned it and then I connected it with a wire that goes into the cab. And that wire goes to a switch, and the switch is right there. So it goes to that switch there, and then from that switch it goes along under the truck there to the tank, and then there's a pressure valve on the tank. So the, the switch in the cab is wired in series with that uh, pressure switch, so both things have to be on in order for the, the compressor to activate. 
So if I want to shut the compressor off with the switch, I can. And uh, that's how I have it wired. I'll show you a wire diagram of what it looks like.